Every one of the steps of eCPR has to be done to perfection. It's like a well choreographed dance, done fast. And when it's showtime, time to save lives, everything has to be perfect. That's why they rehearse. In the neonatal intensive care unit, a sick baby seems to be doing okay until his heart abruptly stops. Could I have some help in here, please? What happens next means the difference between life and death. It's incredibly complex. And it is intense. It's always do or die. And that's why at Seattle Children's, they practice to make perfect. But he's pretty blue. The baby in crisis is a doll. It's a very expensive, high-tech doll, but it's just a doll. And this is only a drill, but it's as real as it can get. And there's not a lot of time for slowly and methodically making decisions and double-checking things. The pace means that you have to get it right the first time. Facilitators Dr. Taylor Sawyer and Dr. Joan Roberts work with clinical practice manager Larissa Yellen. Twice a month, Larissa brings together more than 20 nurses, doctors, and surgeons for an eCPR simulation. All right, we need to turn this baby on the count bed. As we know from Hannah's story, every second counts in this emergency situation. The reason we're doing this is we don't want kids to die. And with this, we are literally pushing medical care to the very furthest extreme we can. There is nothing else that can be done for that child. The eCPR simulations at Seattle Children's are the largest in the nation, and they set the standard. For example, the introduction of the metronome. Can we have a pulse and a rhythm check, please? It's used to keep rotating nurses on tempo while giving chest compressions in a room full of distractions. You know, tables moving and vent moving and the patient moving and all of this, they have to stay riveted on, are we doing a perfect resuscitation? When a baby doesn't respond to CPR, a seamless transition to life support, ECMO, comes next. Another forceps. It takes surgery to connect a baby to the heart-lung machine. That's what Dr. McMullen does alongside another surgeon. The operation is called a cannulation. We make an incision in the neck, and then we have to find these two blood vessels and advance these tubes into the blood vessels. Then we connect them to the ECMO circuit, and we begin ECMO. Bleeding. Okay, section. But Dr. McMullen discovered it was hard to recreate this surgery on a plastic mini mannequin, so he and his teammate invented a solution. So the first thing we had to do is we had to make skin. And so here's uh, some of the skin we made. And you can see it's, it's relatively realistic. And then we went through multiple iterations. And you can see now we use our initial simulator as just the, the garbage bucket that holds all the, the earlier versions of the simulators. And here are two examples of, of the current simulators. Looks like a baby's neck. It acts like a baby's neck. It is so lifelike, anything can happen to it during a simulation. Okay, clamp, resume compressions, please. What's the problem? And today, it does. One of the vessels tears. The patient had some blood loss. It puts us in a, in a bit of a crisis mode, and it trains the surgeon to begin managing the situation slightly differently. Adding to the trauma, the man behind the curtain, who can manipulate the baby's vital signs and equipment. At any given moment, he can make bad go to worse. And then at one point, some air was introduced into the system, and, and that can happen sometimes. OK, run the line and make sure it's OK. Can I have some irrigation, please? And that makes the team have to troubleshoot an additional problem. It, it's a bit like the SWAT team. We just have our team practice it over and over again until they, they got it down. The practices proved to be paying off. The team is currently working within their record time. A few years ago, before we had an organized eCPR team, it would take over an hour to put a person on ECMO. And now we're getting it down to 30 minutes or so. In the world of eCPR, this is the A-Team, setting the pace for other hospitals nationwide. In fact, when we describe our program to other centers around the country, they're very surprised, and, and many of them come here to see how we do it. We would hope that if every pediatric hospital had this type of a system, we would save that many more lives around the country. Good job. Good job.